Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to blend Copic markers to get smooth transitions. So to start off with, quick disclaimer, this drawing was actually done with a different brand of markers, which I will be doing a tutorial and review on soon. But I know Copic markers are the most popular brand of markers, so I wanted to do a tutorial specifically for those. So to start with, you've obviously purchased your very expensive Copic markers. So now you want to know how you can use them effectively and how you can blend effectively. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm going to be using the 72A set. I know a few of you will probably have the smaller sets, but you can pick colors which are similar if they're not included. The very first thing to consider once we've moved on from your markers is which paper you're going to use. The paper you use heavily affects how you can blend. So you have to choose a good paper. Uh, my recommendation to you is this paper, which is Express It Blending Card, okay? It's an expensive paper, but you bought expensive markers, so you may as well get the paper that matches. You can use a lot of other brands. Bristol Board's good. Uh, some, there's a lot of other blending cards which are good. But in my experience, this is number one. It's, it's so good. Get yourself some. I'll leave the link down in the description. It is an affiliate link and you will, any purchase made through that link will support the channel. So thank you if you do. Moving on from that. So now we've got our paper. Okay, so this is the Express It blending card. And I, as you can see, I've drawn two circles which aren't quite perfectly aligned and is really annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose different tones of the same color and we're gonna try and blend a smooth gradient around on this and show you how it's done. Okay, so let's go for purple. Yeah, so I am using the Copic Chows. The Copic Sketch are basically the same thing. They've both got the brush nib, which is important, but they're just larger and can hold more ink. You can blend effectively as well using the Copic Classic, which have the solid nib, as well as any other alcohol markers that have the solid nib instead of the brush tip. It is slightly more difficult and the brush tip is amazing. That's one of the biggest selling points about these markers. I've actually decided to ditch the purple because after testing, I don't think it shows the best contrast for this tutorial. So I've gone with actually what is my new favorite color uh, is teal. So this is something worth pointing out. Even this expensive paper, it still bleeds through to the other side. So just be careful because this is it's very easy to stain your desk or anything else you might be working on, so be careful about that. The first thing I'd recommend is to organize the way you hold your pens. So put them all up the end where the brush nib is, and then you can easily unclip them and reclip them. Be a little bit careful because I've known Copic markers to sort of spray ink when you unclip them and clip them really fast. Uh, but having said that, let's jump straight into it and try to blend these colors, okay? So as you can see, I've picked four. What I'm gonna do first of all is I've already ordered them into my light, uh, light mid, uh, darker mid and dark tones. So I've got them all going across. It can be easy to mix up which are your light and dark tones because it doesn't always make sense from the color of the caps. So just bear that in mind because it, it really can be bad if you pick up the wrong one and slap down a really dark tone over the top or one of your light tones. So to start with, I'm going to pick my very lightest tone. I'm just going to fill this whole area with color. So here we go. I'm not going to be super crazy about getting this perfect. Your first layer doesn't matter too much because you're going down over the top of it again anyway. So let's just fill this whole thing in. Really wishing that I made these circles a bit smaller now. Um, if you don't know why, Google uh, Copic refills and you'll know. Okay, so as you can see, I've done a very rough job of doing that. Don't worry about getting a flat, even tone at this point because you'll just waste your time and your ink because we're gonna be going over it again anyway. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna make this area down here, this is gonna be the dark area going up to light here, okay? Um, if you know anything about spheres and how lighting works, it doesn't mean the darkest part will be here and the lightest here. It will be dark, uh, lighter, lightest and then it'll be slightly darker again over here to give it that 3d effect so we're going to pull up our darkest tone here and we're just going to sort of indicate the area that's going to be the darkest and we're going to work our way back okay so just work your way around this corner being slightly rough i'm not worrying about going over the edges and things like that and that's something that can carry over to your actual drawings as well if you go over the edge I, I usually go over the line work at the end anyway, and you can, you know, hide a multitude of sins by doing that. 
Okay, so this is the area I'm mostly going to be dark, all right? So then what I'm going to do is switch back to my mid dark tone, which is the next darkest one. And then we're going to start around this area. So what you want to do for blending is overlap the areas, okay? It makes it nice and easy with these brush tips. Just overlap and use sort of a circular or back and forth motion to go over them. You're, what you're going to find is if this is your first time using them, it's sort of like watercolour in a way because the paper is soaking up the alcohol and it will start to ripple and it can be a little bit unnerving with what you're doing. So just stick to it, don't worry, it will dry out and it will flatten down afterwards. Okay, so that's our tone we're going to get there and I'm going to start stretching up the sides like this as well to get that sort of 3D effect we talked about. Okay. And then we're going to go to our next lightest tone and we're going to do exactly the same thing, okay? So just go around the edges and overlap, sort of a small circular motion. And what you're doing is you're pushing the ink of this into the ink of the darker tone and mixing them together to sort of make a, a tone in the middle, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we can go over this quite a few times until you're happy with what you've got. You can go quite deep into it because you're just pushing more color over to get that smooth transition. I'm going to keep going all the way around the edge and do the same thing. I'm just going to add a little bit here again because this is going to be my darker area. And we'll start curving this in now like this. Once you've practiced this technique quite a lot, specifically using this paper because it just makes it so much easier or card, whatever you want to call it, you'll really get the hang of doing this. Because the first time you lay a color down, it's going to be lighter. And if you go over it again, it will make it darker. So that gives you extra depth from the same marker. Okay, so let's go to our very lightest tone now. And then we're going to do the same thing we've done with the others. Overlap the edges, circular motion. And just work our way around. So we've got smooth transition all the way around. This is why I said don't worry about the first layer that we put down and making it nice and smooth because we're going over it so much that it really doesn't matter. So this, this is why the brush tips are so good. They, they're almost like a paintbrush in the way that you can put darker and lighter areas and get that real sort of brush stroke. Okay, so that's like the first pass and you can already see we've got quite a smooth transition. There's probably a little bit blocky in the middle so we can go back over that. And then what I would do is layer up. So we're going to go back another layer, do the same thing. We're going to go to our dark tone and that's going to make this dark area even darker. And this is the point where you can start to really focus on getting a lot of ink into the paper. So I very much like high contrast in my drawings. I like the dark areas to be extremely dark and the light areas really light in contrast. So there's a few extra things we can do to this. I know it's just a circle or a sphere, but there's some things we can do to improve the contrast of this drawing. Okay, so that's our darkest tone. And then that we'll go on to the next one again, and we're just going to repeat these steps, smoothing out the transitions. So some additional things that we would do to make the contrast better on this drawing is one, I would probably find a darker tone for the dark area so that I can potentially go one step darker, not quite towards black, but you know, getting towards that pretty close. And then on top of markers, you'll, you'll find if you're using markers a lot, they go hand in hand with colored pencils. Colored pencils are just a match made in heaven with markers. So whatever color pencil brand you're using, be it Prismacolors, uh, 
polychromos or Caran dash if you've if you're rich or the Arteza pencils you can layer them on top of your markers to really get that depth so for example here I could get my a very dark um, aqua color and maybe black and I could really get those with a pencil and then additionally around here I can add in white for the highlight and most of my drawings I would suggest getting a a jelly a white jelly pen which is just white acrylic paint in the pen um, one of these if you've seen any of my other drawings are used a lot and they're great because that's going to give you white over the top of everything else I'll, I'll, we'll have a go at that in a minute so let's get some of these darker colors really wrapping around And then again, back to our lightest color, just to smooth out those transitions. What you'll find is if you use a cheaper paper, you're just going to overload it with ink and it's only going to be able to take a certain amount and then you won't be able to blend it anymore. And that's the limitation of cheap paper. I mean, if you want to test out some cheap paper, use some printer paper and you'll see what I mean. As soon as you touch it, it's sort of like a, a sponge. It will just absorb everything. And, um, yeah, it's just not fun to work with. Okay, so that's looking quite nice now. Uh, one other thing, I don't really want to make this too much of a 3D, it is annoying me a little bit, that you would, if this was a 3D sphere, this area would actually be lighter if, say, the light, like the light's coming down from here, there would be reflection off the surface in this area, would be lighter, but it's not a tutorial for that, so I'm not going to get carried away with that sort of thing. Um, what I will do is just have a quick look and see if we've got any darker tones. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm quite happy with how this blend is looking now. I've got my Arteza colour pencils here and I'm just going to pop those open and I'm going to look for some different tones, and dark sort of greens or aquas to add to this to give it a bit more depth. Uh, we'll also pull out the white pencil as well so we can add some highlights and yeah, try to add a bit more depth to the drawing. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around now. I've picked a couple of colors. I've got my white, my black. I have a ocean blue and turquoise. And I'm just gonna run around and try to deepen up and lighten up certain areas. So this is a tip you can use in all your drawings. Layer your pencils on top of your markers. It allows you to get in and really get that detail as well where you can't with a marker. So you can obviously uh, sharpen these down to a very fine point and get in some very small areas to really make it look detailed. And that's how popular artists really make their drawings have depth and really make them stand out as a higher quality. Now I'm just laying light layers of each colour to really deepen the contrast. I'll make a separate tutorial on blending coloured pencils, but for now just use light pressure and lots of layers. So I actually got an additional pencil because I needed something a little bit darker to add as well. Uh, so I put that in there as well and that's given me my extra highlights and dark areas as well. So it's given me that really good contrast. Okay, so this is my finished sphere. Uh, so it's the Copic Marker blending tutorial. I hope you found that useful. Obviously you got the extra tip for putting the pencils over the top as well. Uh, what I would say is don't go back over now with markers on top of the pencil because you can really damage your markers where it will pick up the pigment and it will, it will get stuck in the end of the brush nib, okay, and it will ruin it, so don't do that. For the extra circle which I've left blank, I'm gonna leave it that way for now. Let me know if you'd like to see maybe a different color or even a different type of tutorial and we'll leave that one blank for next time. So let me know about that in the comments down below. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and share the video with a friend and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers guys.